Are you an indigenous storyteller who likes to delve into the dark? Consider submitting a story to the open call for Never Whistle at Night, an anthology of indigenous dark fiction from Penguin Random House, edited by Shane Hawk and Ted Van Alst. If they accept your story, you'll be published alongside writers such as Owl Going Back, Rebecca Rowanhorse, Shiri Dimeline, Tom Orange, and others. Find all submission details at shanehawk.com forward slash submit or neverwhistleatnight.com. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. Today, we are talking about Let the Right One In. I know this says Let Me In. It is the movie tie-in cover for the American film. Um, and I'm going to be talking about both the books and the two movie adaptations. Uh, so this is the story of uh, Ellie, and uh, I can't remember the man's name, but uh, let's let's go. I'm going to read you the description. Let Me In is a terrifying yet moving tale of two lonely adolescents who stand together against the world. It begins with the horrific discovery of the body of a teenage boy emptied of blood. Our 12-year-old hero is personally hoping that revenge has come at long last. Revenge for all the bad things the bullies at school do to him day after day. While he is fascinated by the murder, it is not the most important thing in his life. A new girl has moved in next door, a girl who has never seen a Rubik's Cube before, but who can solve it at once. They become friends, then something more, but there is something wrong with her, something odd, and she only comes out at night. So uh, the the main character I can't remember any of the, I I haven't I haven't read this one recently I have uh, read it and listened to it um, no actually I just listened to it. I listened to the audio book and that's why I picked up this uh, this will be in my next book haul um, but I needed a regular copy so that I could see if the text holds up to the audio book. Um, so I'll be reading it soon. Uh, I'm just going off my memory here because this is one of those books that's perfect for the Halloween season, and it is also perfect for around uh, Christmas time because, or any time in winter. Uh, the story revolves around the two kids, a boy and a girl. Um, the girl only comes out at night, and if you're worried about any spoilers, you probably need to click away now. Um, I'm not going to go into depth, into depth about the book, but I will be talking about some of the things that weren't mentioned in the description. Uh, with So minor spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Minor spoilers. Uh, this is a vampire story. The little girl is a vampire, and she has an adult with her, and this man is a very terrible, horrible, nasty human being. He is a pedophile. Um, and the way all this interacts together, um, the way these characters, the dynamics, everything about this is, is amazingly done. Uh, it is a beautifully tragic story. It is a horrifying story. This is not a romantic, uh, you know, Twilight-esque uh, kind of vampire story. It's brutal. Um, I loved the interaction between the two kids, and I... I even liked reading about the the man um, who who's with the little girl. Um, there, it, it it bothers me to read this kind of stuff, but I like affecting fiction, and this story especially. Um, I like how all the storylines pan out. And if you have not read this one, I highly recommend it because you're hearing this review from me, someone who cannot stand vampire fiction. I hate it. It's usually over the same thing over and over and over again. And I think this one does a better job at showcasing a child being turned into a vampire than Anne Rice's interview with the vampire. Um, that one, I, I, the, nothing about that book. I didn't enjoy anything about that book. Um, whereas with this one, it 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 covered all the bases that you know that I would it that I would think if I ever wrote a vampire story, these are the things that I would want to tackle. Um, now I I don't have any criticisms here. I truly don't. Um, other than I I do remember wondering why the book was so long, and I don't know if that's because I was listening to the audio book back then. I didn't listen to anything more than times one speed. Um, and nowadays I listen times two, times three, so that could be an issue because I would have been able to read it faster. I just couldn't get my hands on a decently priced copy, and my friend Nettie wouldn't shut up about it. Love you, Nettie. Love you. But uh, um, I couldn't get my hands on a physical copy, so I just ended up getting the audiobook. Um, for some odd reason, this book is insanely 
priced, or it was back then. Also, this is, uh, let me get that, this is written, see, this is why I didn't mention it before, it's by John Alvid Lindquist, I don't know if I got that right, but I, I, I tried. <laughs> Anyways, um, now let's talk about the movies. The original, uh, I believe, Swedish version of the film is super dark, fantastic adaptation, very close to the book. Um, I love it with all my heart. The remake, or the, the American reboot of it, um, is just as good as the original film, and both of them are damn good adaptations of the the source material. The one thing, <laughs> I don't know why uh, American audiences aren't trusted with longer titles. I, d I don't understand it. But Let the Right One In is much better than Let Me In, in my opinion. And I hate that they changed it for American audiences. I especially don't like the movie tie-in cover, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, I got this one for, I think, $3 at Goodwill uh, during my recent, uh, well, not, well, my most recent uh, thrifting haul because I went to BAM um, and I got that. You guys have already seen that book haul, but uh, this one we went out thrifting to celebrate the release of Maiden. Um, anyways, so that's my thoughts on the book. Have you read Let the Right One In or Let Me In? Have you seen the movies? What did you think of them? Um, did you love them? Did you hate them? Did you feel mad about them? If you felt any of those things, explain to me in detail down there in the doobly-doo so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have an E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.